Today I'm going to show you how to use the new location button in iOS 15. First we're going to build the UI around it, then I'm going to show you how it works, and then we're going to talk about like when, where, and why you should use it and what are the benefits. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here I am in a brand new blank Swift UI project. Haven't done anything, uh, but let's get started with this UI. So the first thing we'll need is a Z stack because the bottom of our Z stack is gonna be our map. And then on top of the map will be our location button. So we're gonna put everything in a Z stack. And then the first thing I want is uh, our map. And to have a map, uh, I need to bring in map kit, right? So we will import map kit. And I'm also gonna need to import core location UI. That's for the uh, location button. So those are the two imports I'm gonna need. So now that I have map kit, I can initialize a map with a coordinate region and we're gonna do shows user location. You can see there's a whole bunch of different uh, ways you can initialize a map, depending on if you need map annotations, tracking mode, all that stuff. We're keeping it simple. We're just gonna show the little dot on the map of our user's uh, location. So I'm gonna have to kind of build this one on my own here. So we'll do coordinate region and you see I'm gonna have, to have a binding to a region. So let's create that region variable here. And what region is, is what part of the map do I show, right? Do I show the entire globe? Do I show just the city streets of Los Angeles, California? Like what part of the map should I show? So to create that, we need at state private var, we'll call it region. And that is gonna equal an MK, short for map kit, coordinate region. And you'll see this takes in a center and a span. So the span again is how zoomed in on the map you wanna be. And the center is the latitude and longitude of, of the center location, right? So you can see we get a CL location coordinate 2D. So we'll initialize one of those. And you see that takes in a Latin long. And I'm just gonna put in 40 and 120, just some random spot on the globe. Of course, if you're building this for your app, whatever starting location you want, uh, do that. And the span is an MK coordinate span. As you can see, that takes in a lat delta and a long delta. And you kind of have to play with this. For now, I'm going to do 100 uh, by 100. That's really zoomed out. So if you want to super zoomed in, you would do one by one or maybe even 0.1 by 0.1. You'll, you'll see us play with that in a little bit. But for the start, I want a big zoomed out picture as you'll see here uh, in a second. So now that we have our region defined, now we put a binding to that region. So dollar sign uh, region here. And then again, the other parameter was shows user location equals true. Now it's not that simple. We're not gonna show user location just because we set that to true. That just allows our map to show it. We have to implement all the location stuff that we'll do in a little bit. Again, we're just building the UI at first. So let me resume on the preview and you should see a little bit of the outline of the map, but to actually get the location, you gotta run your preview. So you see it shows the little maps logo in the lower left, but when you hit the play button, that's when we'll actually get our map. Okay, so you see we have these white bars at the top. That's because we're not ignoring safe area. We'll add that in a second, but you can see the big zoomed out picture, right? So just for fun here, that was 100, 100. Let's do 10 by 10, just to show you like what I'm talking about. And then we'll resume the preview, it updates. And you can see we're a little bit more zoomed in now around Beijing, it looks like. I just picked random numbers. But that is how you can like zoom in and zoom out. So we'll go back to 100, 100. That's just our start. What we're gonna do is once we get the user's permission, we're gonna zoom into their location to a much zoomed in level. You'll see that in action uh, later. Again, just building the UI for now. So the first thing I wanna do, let's get rid of these white spaces at the top and bottom. So on our map, uh, we can do dot ignores uh, safe area. There you go much better. And here we'll do uh, dot tint and then dot uh, pink. This is gonna be the color of the little circle dot that you see here on the screenshot. I always choose pink because I think that stands out more uh, on the map. Ah, tint is only available in iOS 15 or newer. We're gonna have to do this anyway for the location button, so I'm glad I got that error now. So what you wanna do, click on your location button project, and on the project here, why did it give me that error? I'm targeting iOS 15. Maybe there's somewhere else, maybe the target. Ah, yes, there it is, the iOS 14 there, so up to iOS 15, that should do that. So I guess that is a, a certain thing there. Like if you support only iOS 15, you can do that. As you saw in the air, if you wanna support iOS 13, 14, you have to do the if at availability check. Um, usually people don't implement these new features until they can be supported by their minimum target. And the reason being is because if you try to support all the new stuff, you have that hashtag if available like everywhere in your code and it makes your code base kind of a mess. So you really only wanna implement this new stuff 
if you absolutely like have to for your product. Again, that's if you're supporting less than iOS 15. Okay, just make sure there's no errors. Cool. So we have our map, right? That's the base layer of our Z stack. So on top of the map, we want our location button, right? That's why we're here to talk about this location button. So on the Z stack, right? I'll scroll up a little bit. You can do location button. Here we go, right there. And then we can initialize that uh, with some options here. You see down here, right? It says the title is location button dot title. And then the action is like whatever you want to do. So for the title, we want to do dot. And you can see we can do current location, send current location, share my location. So location button is pretty restricted in what you can do with it, right? These are the preset titles you can give it. And then you'll see it has certain special modifiers, right? So you can only customize this to a certain extent. Uh, so do current location, that's what we want our title to be. And then the action is going to be uh, for now, just print, print nothing for now, we're gonna come back. But you see, just by doing that, we get not a pretty button, right? The black on blue, that's what we're gonna tweak a little bit. So first up, we wanna push this button down to the bottom. So what we can do in our Z stack is add an alignment uh, parameter here, alignment, and we'll do dot bottom. So that means we're gonna align all our stuff on the bottom. There you go, our location button is on the bottom. We're gonna add some padding to that to get it you know, too far off the bottom, but let's add some other modifiers to our location button to make it look how we want. So first up, let's do foreground color dot white, right? That makes it, you know, look more reasonable here. Let's give it some corner radius. Dot corner radius, uh, we'll do eight. And then here we have another one called label style, right? And you can see we get uh, automatic icon only, title and icon, title only. So look, if you do icon only, see you just get the little button, right? So you again, you can customize this uh, a little bit. And you can see we can do dot symbol variant. You can see we got circle, fill, none, rectangle, slash, square. We'll do fill, right? And that's gonna fill in our little triangle there. Let's go back to uh, title and icon for label style, but that's actually the default. So I'm gonna delete the label style. You know what, I'm gonna leave the label style uh, in there just so you can see it, but we'll keep it title and icon, even though that is the default to give us the full picture. You know, and then we can uh, also give it a tint, right? If you don't like the blue color, maybe Maybe we'll go with that, that pink, right? Maybe that's the theme of our app, right? You can change the tint. And then, like I said, we're gonna give it some padding, uh, but only on the bottom and we'll do like 50, just to, just to bump it up a little bit. And of course, if you didn't want it in the bottom middle, you can move it to the bottom left and just have the icon only so it's a smaller button. You can style it however you like using these modifiers. So now that our UI is in place, let's actually make this thing work. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a view model for our content view. Quick little note on that, that will make all of our location stuff tightly coupled with this initial, it's called content view, but maybe you would rename it map view or something. Now, I think that's fine if this is the only screen using the user's location. However, if in your app, you're using the user's location on many different screens, many different sections of your app, then maybe you wanna have something like a location manager that handles all of your location stuff. But for now, we're gonna put it in the content view model because it is tightly coupled with this screen. So uh, we're just gonna do it in the same file. You can create your view model in a totally different file if you like, but we'll do final class content view model. It's gonna have to conform to NS object for the uh, core location stuff. It is an observable object and uh, we're gonna conform to the CL location uh, manager delegate. And you'll see why, because we're gonna use some delegate methods, uh, specifically did update location. So the first thing we're gonna do on our view model is actually move our region down here. And there is gonna be a reason for that. So I'm gonna cut that, so Command X to cut that. And then uh, we'll paste it here. And instead of state private var, this is gonna be uh, at published. And here's why, is because once we get our user's location, we're gonna set our region to that user's coordinate. Right now we're just using this random latitude and longitude of like 40, 100, right? But it will be our user's coordinate to go right to their location. So when we update the region, because it's a published variable, anything that's listening to this will update as well. So we need to set up our content view here, which has our map and our location button to listen for our region to change. And when it changes, we'll update the UI. So that's how that's gonna work. So to do that, we'll do at state object, this is gonna be our view model, private var, we'll call it view model, and that equals a new instance of content view model. So now that we've initialized that, we have our region here. So instead of just dollar sign region, we wanna do dollar sign view model dot region. So that should still be working. Again, first step on building our view model before we get into our location stuff. So the next thing we need in our view model is a location manager. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Let's create that first. Let location manager equals CL location manager and we'll initialize a new one. Let's take a look at that and see what this is. Big picture, right? So we'll go open up the documentation. 
So CL Location Manager is the object that you use to start and stop delivery of location related events in your app. And you can feel free to read through this, but essentially anything to do with your user's location goes through your location manager and you're gonna see us use that. So the location manager uh, is a big uh, part of this, pretty much the main thing here. So now that we've created one, let's use it. So we're gonna create a function called func uh, request allow once location permission. I know that's a mouthful. I like to be specific with my function names. Uh, and that allow once location permission is what the location button is all about. And I think this is a great time to maybe pause for a minute to talk about when and why you would use the location button. So normally when you want to request location, you see this prompt here. And the downside here is if they don't want to give you the location and they hit don't allow, you're kind of screwed, eh, not totally screwed, but in order for them to give you location permission now, they got to navigate to their settings in their app, they got to find your app, they got to turn location back on. If your app is relying on user location and they hit don't allow, it's kind of annoying for them to go turn it back on, so you don't want them to do that. And with everyone cognizant of giving their location away now, what the location button does is it just gives allow once permission. So you'd want to use this when you only need the location like just once, just quick to like maybe show a section of a map like we're going to do. And then when they're done using the app, they don't you don't have their location anymore. So it's privacy focused. And the good thing about this is you'll see this prompt here. Even if they hit not now, you're not like screwed like you were before. They're gonna get this prompt until they hit okay. But as you see, the prompt says like, you, they're only getting this permission like temporarily. So that's the problem this uh, solves. And again, it's great when you only need to get the location one time and then you're done. So with this request allow once location permission is gonna do is we're gonna on our location manager dot request uh, location, right? And let's take a look at this request location here. Option click on that, by the way, to get that. I'll go into the documentation to make it bigger for you to read. Uh, so you see, uh, request one-time delivery of the user's current location. Again, that's the use case we want. Now, if you are a hiking app and, or a jogging app and you wanna track their location all along their route, this isn't the one. This is just to get that one-time location. Maybe if you just wanna find restaurants near them or something like that, right? So again, use case specific, but you see this method returns immediately. Calling it causes the location manager to obtain a location fix. Uh, and call the delegates, this is big, location manager did update location. So that's the delegate method we wanna update because that's what's gonna give us the location. Okay, so let's go back to Xcode and let's implement that delegate method. And here, that's why we conform to the CL location manager delegate up here, by the way. So we can do did update and you can see here location manager did update, careful, you see I did update heading. No, nope, we want did update locations. And you see that returns an array of CL location. So hit return there. And then uh, what I wanna do here is just get the latest location in this array. Because if this was constantly being called, it basically builds up an array of location. That's how you get like, you know, the route or the path someone was on. So we just want the one uh, location, the last one. And we have to unwrap the optional because this array may not have any locations in it. So guard let latest location uh, equal locations. And that's this uh, variable right here, which as you can see is an array of CL location. Locations dot first, right? So we want the uh, first location there and then we'll do else, you know, show an error if need be, and then we'll just return. Uh, we won't do the error handling now to save some time. This video is already quite long. So now we have this latest location, which again is a CL location. So let's use that location that we got from the user to update our region here, which will then zoom into their uh, location. So because we're updating the UI, we wanna make sure we're uh, back on the main thread. So dispatch q.main.async. In here, we will do uh, self.region, right? We wanna update our region with our new location here. Equals, initialize mk coordinate region. You see that takes in a center and a span, just like we did before. So now the center, we already have a, a CL location. So we can do latest location dot coordinate, right? And that gives us our coordinates. So this is the latitude and longitude of the user. And then the span, we'll do mk coordinate span, just like we did before. And instead of 100 by 100, we'll do 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Again, we're gonna really get zoomed into the street level of the user's location. So now again, once we get our latest location, uh, we are going to update our region with that. And then the last one we have to conform to is the did fail with error, right? Location manager did fail with error, and then we'll just print uh, error.localized description for now. Again, proper error handling uh, you can handle on your own. We're worried about the location button and all that good stuff. So uh, let me walk through this one more time just to give a big, uh, big overview before we run it. Um, let me do this before I forget because I know once I explain, I'll forget. But this uh, request allow once permission, which you know starts off this whole chain of events, I need to make sure I call that 
in my action of the location button. So I'll do view model dot request allow once location permission. And one thing, if you've worked with location before, like before the location button, you may be thinking, okay, we got to go to our RP list here, right? And then we have to add a property with our, uh, you know, privacy location permission, right? Maybe you've done that before. Well, with the location button, you don't have to do any of that. So that is also a nice little bonus there. So I'll go back to the content view and we should be good to go, but let me give another walkthrough, right? So we have our location button. When we tap on that, we're gonna request allow once location permission, which does this, right? And it's gonna do location manager, which we created here, CL location manager. It's gonna request location which again, gets the latest did update locations. And we're gonna check to make sure we have the latest location, which is the location that's the first in this array. Once we have that, we're gonna update our region with that latest location dot coordinate, and then we're gonna zoom in the map to 0.05, right? And then just in case we get an error, we're gonna print the localized uh, description. Hopefully we don't get an error, right? Haven't ran this yet. Hopefully we get it on the first try. But that's essentially what's happening with location button. So let's run this. Fingers crossed it works first try. So here we are, here's the simulator. I'm gonna hit current location. Okay, so this is the prompt I was talking about, right? Location button, that's the name of the app, by the way. Okay, we got a crash. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave this in because I made the classic mistake that many of you may make as well. I make this mistake all the time. Uh, so what we have to do, back to the content view, right? We're responding to the delegate, right? See a location manager delegate. We're, we're, you know, did update locations, all this stuff. We never set the delegate. And many longtime iOS developers that are watching this are probably chuckling. Oh, yeah, it happens all the time. Uh, got me. Again, when you're teaching, you just stuff slips. So what we need to do is we need to set our location manager delegate to our content view model. So what we can do in the initializer here is override uh, init and we can do super dot init and then we'll do location manager dot delegate equals self, right? So you have to set the delegate so you can respond to the, to the delegate method. So now this should be working. So yeah, that just slipped my mind as I was explaining things, teaching. Uh, so now, okay, we've already given the permission though, right? So the pop-up didn't happen, right? I've already given allow once. So they're not gonna see that every time they launch unless they hit not now, but we're good here. Hit current location. And then there you go. It went right to Cupertino. My, I'm not at Apple headquarters, but my simulator is set to Apple headquarters and that's where we are. So again, to walk through that real quick, right? They tap the button. Uh, we said location manager request location. We pulled the latest location and then we updated our region, which again is a published variable that will update the UI anytime this changes. So we updated the region with our latest location dot coordinate and then we zoomed in a bit. And that is how we got to this beautiful picture of Cupertino uh, with our user's location showing there. Now, if you're here learning about the location button, you're probably making great apps and you probably need a way to showcase those apps or a website for that app. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get your app website or iOS developer portfolio up and running very quickly. Now, I know as developers, we have a tendency to want to build it ourselves, right? We're developers, of course. However, you got to remember, there's an opportunity cost to your time. Like, it takes a lot of time to build a custom website that looks great on all screen sizes from desktop to mobile, right? You got all the browser compatibility issues. It's just very time-consuming. I don't know about you, I would rather be building apps than managing a website. So let Squarespace handle that for you. They have all kinds of beautiful themes uh, to make it look great. They handle all the SEO and the analytics for you. Again, it just takes so much off your plate. So when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that wraps up the location button, new in iOS 15. Again, I really like how it just gives you that allow once permission. Uh, you don't kind of get locked out if they hit don't allow. So very handy. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.